Hello and welcome to the next episode of my Learn With Me Hydrosynth series. This is episode 4, Mutants, part 1. So first, what is this series? Well, this series follows my process end-to-end -end of learning about the Ashen Sound Machine's Hydrosynth Explorer. The Hydrosynth Explorer is a 8-voice digital synthesizer with the same sound, en sound engine as the original Hydrosynth and with a polyphonic aftertouch keyboard. The original Hydrosynth was bigger, had some more controls, but otherwise it sounds identical and everything we talk about applies. So far, I've given you my first impressions, I've talked about the control paradigm that this uses, and we've experimented with the simple and not so simple oscillators. What I'd like to move on to today is to talk about mutants. So first, what is a mutant? Well, a mutant can be thought of as an effect that gets applied to the oscillators. So this is even before they go into the mixer. And looking on the signal flow diagram, we can see oscillator 1 passes through mutants 1 and 2, oscillator 2 passes through mutants 3 and 4 before going into the mixer. So these give us a lot of capacity to do timbral shaping without looking at the subtractive part of the synthesizer or the traditional effects. So let's start by making ourselves an init patch. Oscillator 1 is a saw wave. Let's look at the first mutant. Now, there are several mutants available, the first of which is FM Lin, which is a linear FM mutant, which I'm not going to talk about now because it's a little more complicated and I'd rather go through the more straightforward ones and then circle back to that. I may even do a complete separate video about FM synthesis with the ASM Hydrosynth. So let's look through the mutants. We have Wave Stack, Oscillator Sync, PW Original, that's Pulse Width, Pulse Width Squeeze, Pulse Width ASM, Harmonic, and Phase Difference. So given that I'm skipping Linear, I'm going to jump straight to Wave Stack, and I'm probably going to do three or four today, depending on how long it takes. And we can see, as neither of these is illuminated, there is only one page of parameters here. Um, the two parameters are depth and wet dry. So what exactly is WaveStack? Well what WaveStack is is a detuning of the oscillator in the audio domain and playing up to five copies of it. So you can think of it as a bit like a chorus in that it makes multiple detuned copies but it doesn't inherently have the motion of a chorus. Depth specifies the amount of detune between these instances, and wet dry is a wet dry mix for the effect. So when this is 0%, i.e. 100% dry, 0% wet, we are hearing the raw oscillator sound. When this is 100% wet, we are hearing pure wave stack sound, and anything in between is in between. So let's listen. So let's set depth to 0, and let's turn wet dry up. So, when depth is zero, we are still stacking five copies of this waveform on top of themselves, and that has an impact on the sound we hear. It kind of squares the wave off, it's a bit like a type of saturation or distortion. Anyway, let's now listen to what happens as we increase the depth. So we go towards that classic detuned, almost super sore sound, because this is a sore wave going in. And let's try the wet dry. And the wet dry, it tames it and also maybe reduces the amount of oscillation we get. But this does give us a sound like we have multiple stacked oscillators from this single oscillator, which increases the, the breadth of the sound significantly. Let's try it on a few other waveforms while we're here. Sine wave. So it doesn't sound very bold necessarily, but we can hear that movement because of the phasing between the copies. Triangle. The movement is a bit more clear. Triangle saw. Saw. Square, 
quite interesting, quite a simple way to add a lot of weight and breadth to a single oscillator. This is not doing a unison, this is just one oscillator, so we could still unison stack, we could still do stereo spread, and we could use the other oscillators. So you could imagine making a really powerful monophonic unison lead if you wanted. Let's move on to the next of the mutants. The next mutant is oscillator sync. Notice that the page down button is illuminated, so that means there's another page. There are two pages here. Let's look at the parameters. Starting on the second page, unlike the previous one, this has a feedback amount. So there is an effect. It is possible to feed some of the output back into the input. This can have all sorts of different effects depending on the type of effect that it is. So we'll experiment with that. We have this window parameter, which I had to look at the manual to find out about. It says that it is applying a type of bandpass filter to the input to make the effect of the sync less and less apparent or strong because sync can have a very harsh sound. So I shall experiment with that. Source. So what sync does is when a certain oscillator resets, reaches the end of its cycle, it resets the phase of another oscillator. So since this mutant is applied to oscillator one, we are using oscillator one as the reset source. So you might think, well, how can they get out of sync? The answer is on the first page. Rather than simply using that source, what we do is we apply a ratio to the frequency that oscillator one is exhibiting. So we could have a virtual oscillator, which is twice as fast or half as fast. That frequency works alongside this depth. They describe the depth as the strength of the resyncing. So my interpretation of that would be that at maximum value, it's like a hard sync, which means it instantaneously jumps in phase. And at lower values, it doesn't jump perfectly in phase instantaneously. I don't know if that's true, but that's the interpretation of the manual. But let's listen to what it sounds like. So first, let's set it fully wet. Let's have no feedback, no windowing, default configuration. Leave the ratio at one and sweep the depth. So interestingly, sweeping the depth there has a sound which is analogous to, a, to having two synced oscillators and then sweeping the pitch. Given that the ratio is one, that isn't exactly what I would expect, but that is what we get. Let's see what happens if we set an intermediate depth and we sweep the ratio. So interestingly, adjusting both ratio and depth give us sync type sounds. They give us that sound of the wave resetting at different points, meaning that the pitch might shift or the timbre might shift depending on which way that ratio is going. Let's try wet dry. So we can hear the dry signal coming back in, some sort of phasing near the middle, and then the strength of the wet signal comes out. So let's experiment with the windowing parameter. So I, it's, it does what they describe, but exactly what that constitutes spectrally is not entirely clear to me, but it does soften the effect of the sync. Let's try feedback now. So we can hear that it's almost clipping a bit. When I use this windowing function, it seems less intense. Let's see... 2.5 maybe? When you hold shift, this jumps to certain specific ratios. So I've got 0.5 there exactly if I wish. So now let's try different waveforms into this. Fine. 
But interestingly, when you're listening to Cyan here, it's still quite strong, I guess, because this windowing and this feedback is squaring it off. So let's turn feedback down. So when you're feeding back onto itself, your sine wave is getting stretched and it's getting clipped. So it's sounding more and more like a square wave. So now let's change the waveform. Look back at the mutants. I think that's all the parameters that we've explored, we've had to explore. So let's move on to um, go back to saw. Let's move on to the next one. Obviously, in practice, we would be looking to modulate these parameters to get some interest out. So this is pulse width original. I'm going to turn those parameters that I was adjusting back to what I think are reasonable defaults. So the original pulse width method refers to the way pulse width modulation for non-pulse waves is sometimes implemented. And this is, whatever your waveform is, you either stretch that waveform or compress that waveform. But the period remains the same. So where we compress it, the extra space is simply zero. So our sine wave becomes nothing and then a sine wave. Or if we stretch it, our sine wave goes outside the scope. So all we see is some section of the sine wave. So whichever way, whether you stretch it out or compress it, you get timbral changes. Just like the previous one, we have a ratio. And this ratio is, since we're not operating on the oscillator, we're operating on the audio, we're taking sections of audio of length corresponding to one cycle of the oscillator if the ratio is one. If we change the ratio down, it will act on um, longer snippets of audio because the frequency is lower. If we turn the ratio up, it will act on shorter snippets of audio. So in other words, this pulse width modulation or this pulse width change does not have to be changing the waveform as you think of it, but can be applied periodically through the wave. So that's an interesting difference in the way this operates from the way you might expect. On the second page, we have feedback. So let's just listen for now. So we've got it 100% wet. You don't really hear anything. Now let's turn the depth up. So it has that similar transition to a square wave. It becomes more and more thin and, and sharp as the waveform becomes narrower. So that's what that depth is doing. But I think what will be interesting is if I turn up the ratio. Um, let's, let's go for... Let's try and sweep the ratio. So because the pulse width is acting at some other periodicity based on the ratio, we start to hear, especially when the effect is strong, we hear this pitch, this ratioed pitch, rather than the original pitch. So there's an interesting balancing act here. But when the depth is very low, that's much less um, audible. Try a little feedback. So wet dry blends pulled back. And remember, this is only one of the pair of effects that are available. So if I wished, I could also wave stack this. I can also animate these parameters, which I may do if we have some time available. So this is the same thing with a sine wave going in, triangle, triangle saw, saw, square, pulse, narrow pulse, 
So I would say you can hear some pretty strong timbral variations available here. And this does have a parallel to the classic pulse width sound, and I may experiment modulating this. So let's go to the probably the last effect that I'm going to be looking at today, and this is called pulse width squeeze. So a while ago, um, I was experimenting making a soft synth, and this is the method that I use to come up with a wave shaping parameter. What happens is that you have your waveform, you have one cycle of it, and imagine you have a midpoint here. What's going to happen is you can shift where that midpoint is, and the part of the wave before it takes longer to play, and the part after it takes less time. So if a sine wave looks like this, in an extreme I have, um, in an extreme I have very narrow, followed by very long, or at the other extreme I have very long, followed by very narrow. So this allows you to get a pulse width type sound, but that works with any waveform without introducing so much of that zero space. Um, I found this to be quite effective, but let me, let me reset these parameters and let's look at the parameters that are available and let's listen. So this does have feedback as well. So I think there must be some sort of phase shift, probably because these mutants work on an audio buffer, and you can hear that when you sweep the wet dry blend in. So these are introducing a delay. Um, it's I don't know exactly how big that delay is, but I think you can hear that because of this wet dry sweep. So let's try setting some depth. Just like the previous pulse width, this is not working in collaboration with the oscillator. This is working on audio. So I can specify that this operates at a higher or lower frequency than the actual oscillator runs. So let's listen to that. Interesting. And now let's try wet dry blend. Let's add a little feedback. Interesting, let's try some different waveforms in here. Fine. Oh, nice. So this squeezing gives us a much more metallic timbre. So I, I like the way that works. I'm already imagining um, the possibility of doing maybe a wave stack sign and doing some of this uh, pulse width, or do this type of pulse width and then feed it into wave stack or do a second pulse width, both of which are modulated independently. So that's, that's nice. I, I already like, like the sound of that. Let's try some of the other waveforms. Triangle, triangle saw, saw, square, Okay, I already liked it with the sign, so I'm going to stick with that. So let's say that what I'm going to do is modulate the depth, and I'm going to maybe modulate the ratio. Now, I haven't demonstrated how to do this before, but I'm going to do it. So LFO1 is going to modulate a parameter of mutant 1, and that parameter is a ratio. That's fine. And then LFO2 is going to modulate mutant 1, and that is going to modulate the depth. So I now have two modulation routings in place. And the ratio, let's pull the ratio down a bit, pull the depth down a bit. And let's go to the mod matrix again and let's adjust those. So, so we can see the light here indicating the rate of motion. Let's try and do the same for depth. I'm going to adjust the frequency of this way down. So you can hear this is the effect of depth one. So 
turn that frequency down. Let's bring this frequency up so I can adjust the parameter a bit. So the ratio being a little odd is giving us a slightly odd pitch, but I'm, I'm okay with that. I think this is already sounding something like a drone, so let's see what happens if we first... Let's latch that. Let's add some effects. Um, let's see. So that's just some compression. I'm going to try and put a really short delay on this. Interesting. So now a voice, let's go for a unison. Some B tune. Stereo width. It's a bit metallic, um, so let's. Sounds better. Now let's go for cloud, long tail. Um, let's have less damping in the high, a little more in the low. Turn the tone up. And glide on. It's clipping a little bit there. Um, kind of unusual sound there, but I think it demonstrated that we can get some interesting motion and some interesting tombal variation from essentially one oscillator and one mutant using a couple of modulations. I hope you've been enjoying the series. I hope you will join me as I explore the rest of the mutants and all the rest of the features of the synthesizer. But in any case, and most importantly, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and goodbye.